This is my husband, Eli. We would like to welcome all of our online viewers and our Elkhart family. Today is going to be a great day at the Harp. Wow, wow, wow. What a powerful time to be in the body of Christ, and especially at World Harvest Church. Come on, let's give a shout. Our online viewers, Elkhart, listen, 8818, God is, has and is releasing something so powerful through our pastor into the earth. How many of you know that's true? Amen. Come on, how many of you experienced something? 8818, bang, things are moving, come on. So Pastor Parsley has been declaring and preaching that we're coming out of the old and into the new. Come on, out of the old and into the new. That's shouting right there. Come on, come on, come on. And we ain't never going back. Can I get an amen to that? We are not going back. So let's agree and declare, let's agree and declare that a breaking has already come in our favor. Yes. And a shifting has already come in our direction. And we're coming into fullness. And can I get an amen on that? Amen. So could you stand to your feet? Let's give just a loud shout of praise to God as we welcome Harvest Music Live. Amen. Good morning, great people! So glad you're here today watching online. We welcome you. Good morning, Elkhart.
I see you in the fire, see you in the flames, see you when the promise seems delayed. I see you in the dark, see you when it's high, I see you if my whole world falls apart. No, no, no.
creator of heaven and earth is standing by my side. And I know you're always moving. I love this line. When things are above my head or, or out of reach or I can't fix it by myself, I know you are making all things right. That's why we don't have to wait till we see the victory. I know you are making all things right. If I can praise him then, I can praise him now. You're making all things right. Working all things for my good. Working all things for my good. Come on, take five seconds and give him a working all things for my good kind of shout. Don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Let me hear you say. Even when I don't see it, you work. from let's just lift our hands father God we thank you that you have the ability to turn things around in our favor and that you never stop working father we're thankful for the gift of your son for the power that is in his name and right now today for every need represented in this house, in this place, we call on the name of Jesus. We call on the name that is healer. We call on the name that is savior. We call on the name that is deliverer. And we celebrate that name. Woo!
worship in your own way. Jehovah Joshua, we call on your name right now. We call on the name that is all powerful, the name that is strong, the name that is mighty, the one who's a father, who's a mother, who's a sister, who's a brother, who's a friend, who's redeemer, who's savior, who's deliverer. Ooh, yeah. Come on, just lift your hands wherever you are. Presence of the Lord is in this room, and it's raining down. It's raining down. Miracle signs and wonders. Whatever you need. Jump and grab. Whatever you need is raining down. Whatever you need is raining down. Just reach up and grab. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Whew, Jesus. Sing it again.
And Father God says the kingdom is right in front of you. And 8, 8, 18 is not, it's just new and it's fresh. And here we go every day. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. Here it comes. Hey. Wednesday night, right? I had put up a post on Instagram saying, so excited about what God is gonna do tonight. And I had 
this wonderful man from Topeka, Kansas, messaged me and said, I want to hook my church up to watch it. Where can I, how do I do that? I said, the best place to do it is on Facebook, right? He said, my son, who's probably about three or four or five years old, is deaf and we're believing for him to be healed. I want you to know, this morning, I got up, and it is not my custom on Sunday morning, but I got up and went to my messages on Instagram. It was actually like 3.30 this morning. Woke up out of a dead sleep, and, and something said, go to your messages on Instagram. And there is a video of this little boy and his dad who had been deaf, and they're playing music, and the little boy's going like this. Dancing to the music.
your partner and tell your partner my miracle is dependent upon me praising for you. So excuse me while I help you get yours while God gives me mine. Get your partner and dance. You got 30 more seconds. Bless the Lord. Woo. Hot, hot. Miracles are dropping in Elkhart, Indiana. Miracles are falling in Elkhart, Indiana. Miracles are happening in Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana.
some confirmation to what Elder Germain said prophetically because when I saw Miss Jan get up here and dance with her husband, Pastor Cal, I heard God say exactly what Elder G said and that there was an anointing for families. And then I saw Chris and Yolanda bring their oldest daughter up and start dancing. And that was confirmation. And before I could get up here and get my mic turned on, Elder G said it. So let me take it a step further for you. Not only is there an anointing for families, uh -huh. but for family restoration. Yes. Some of you in this room and watching online have been estranged from your family members. I'm talking about immediate family uh -huh. members, sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers. You have a child that's away from God. You have a child that's living an alternative lifestyle. And I'm telling you, if you will dive in dive to in. these troubled waters, and they may not be here in person, but you can dance for them in spirit and believe the word of the Lord that says you and your house shall be saved, healed, delivered, set free. folk in the room because this started by elder germain saying if you've got your spouse here grab your spouse and praise with them and i could feel all the single people in the room clam up and think well that doesn't apply to me because i don't have a spouse yet they're not here with me in this room why don't you do what god told me to do when anisha came down here and praised with me Praise like you want your spouse to praise for you and with you. And if you will, and you will stay righteous, God will send you an on fire, Holy Ghost filled man or woman of God to be in covenant with you. So dance for your spouse. Dance for your children. Dance for your estranged family members. Add as, 
at this morning, the Lord put the scripture in my heart, and I really didn't understand why until this just happened. But I felt when um, Ashton was speaking of family restoration, I was I heard, uh, but but you don't understand. You don't understand what they did to me. You don't understand what they said to me. You don't understand what they said about me. You don't understand. Well, there is no excuse. We have to forgive. It doesn't matter what they did. We can't wait. It's not a process. We have to be as Jesus. When we knelt at that altar, he didn't say, well, let me think about it. Let me give, give me a couple of weeks. Let me mull over what you did and see if you're worthy of forgiveness. He immediately forgave us of every nasty, dirty Thank sin. You, he didn't wait for us to get clean. He didn't wait for us to get clean and then, then come to the altar. He took us as we were. And so parents, family members, when these kids when family comes back you take them as they are you don't wait for them to come the prodigal the father wasn't waiting for him to be clean out of that pig pen he was waiting with a robe and a ring as 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 the son that he was before he left and this is a scripture that god put on my heart in isaiah 43 he said, but forget all that. It is nothing compared. Nothing. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. What? For yeah. I'm going to do a brand new yeah. thing. A new thing. See, I have already begun. Don't you see it? I will make a road through the wilderness of the word world for my people to go home and create rivers for them in the desert. My God. Read it again. But forget all that. It forget is, all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Nothing. For I'm going to do a brand new thing. New thing. thing. New thing. Somebody show God is doing a new thing. A new thing. A new thing. Just reading through Isaiah, 
read through the Old Testament and remember how great is our God. Hallelujah. If we remember how great is our God, we won't be down. We won't be able to not stand up. We won't be down and, and we won't be lost in the wilderness. How great is our God. He, how great. Think of every miracle he did. He was able to open the sea and let the children of Israel through. Think of everything. Read the Old Testament. I just started leafing through and going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Yeah, I remember all the great things God has done, not way back. But we just like, oh, another miracle. Oh, another kid healed of cancer. Yeah. Another blind eye open. Yeah. Another deaf ear. Yeah. But what about my finances? Right. How great is our God? How great? How great is our God? How great? He is your God. How great is our God? He is your God. And I'm not going to stand in the midst of, of, of my mind like I'm standing in a bunch of trash. Yeah, I've got a lot of issues. I've got problems. I Just because I'm married to the pastor doesn't mean uh, nothing happens to me. I mean, you know, he doesn't come home and a cloud comes in our house, you know. I mean, you know. I gotta get this on my own. She's gotta get this on her own. And that's it. Stand my son up. has to. So yes, we gotta cast a shadow, all of us. Cast but why? But why we are like this is because we all paid a price for eight, eight, eighteen. Yes. And it's not gone. Oh no. The residual is that's still here. Still yes. Still here. That's the brand new thing. It's still here. It's still here. It's in. Yes. His work was forever. And if you didn't get it that night, doesn't mean you aren't going to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just hasn't manifested. Right. But the demonstration of God is promised. And it's all through the word. We just have to read it. We just have to read it. And we have to know him. Yes. And when we know him, we have faith that he will do as he promised. I want to see that other one. Just start shouting for the word. Shout for the word. Shout for the word. Thank God for the word. Worship God for the word. Scream for the word. Wave for the word. Shout for the word. Spin for the word. And now dance for the word. So look, look, forget all that. Yeah. A supernatural forgetting yes. is coming to you yes. now. Yes. God said it's going to be new to you because you can't remember when it wasn't there. But after this now moment, you will never remember that it was there. I thought I had a believing Lay your hands on your head and shout, mind, mind. Never, never remember, remember. That, again. that again. Now shout it out of here. Shout, scream, yeah. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you. Some kind of creature, preacher, idol, worship. Lay hands on yourself. Yes.
said that, but right above there, it says, whenever you have thrown away your idols, what? I have shown you my power. Whenever you have thrown away your idols, I have shown you my power. So if you're not seeing his power in demonstration, cast down some idols right now. Tear down the temples of Baal. We cast down the temples Break down the astral pole. We cast it down now. We rebuke it now. We cast it down now. We rebuke it now. Anything you want with all your heart other than Jesus is an idol. You want ministry more than you want Jesus. You have idolatry in your heart. We cast it down now. Don't, don't read anymore. You, you be in this all with months. Find that one you had before. Right here. Is that it? Yes. Somebody need to forget all that. Yeah. What does that mean? You need to forget him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, there are going to be some folk walk away from relationships today. Yes. Yes. That are not yes. making you closer to him. Yeah. Wow. If you got to repent about what the two of you doing, you better tell him goodbye, goodbye. today. Bye bye. Hey. Oh, are you not shouting now? <laughs> That's good word. I said, you not shouting now. Some of you been trolling on the internet while your spouse is in bed. You better cast that idol down. In the name of Jesus. Forget all that. Say, forget all that. Forget all that. Here's why. Here's why. Why do we hold on to a penny when God's putting a hundred in our hand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's what he said. Forget all that because it is nothing compared yes. to what I am uh -huh. going yeah. to do. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let your fear go. Let your doubt go. Let your unbelief go. Let your preconceived ideas about God go. Let your preconceived idea about what church is go. Woo. And then he said, I will see, I have already begun. 8818 was not a service, it was a movement. It was not a temporary uh, come on. That's right. come adjustment. On. Come on. That's right. hey, hey, hey. Come on, preacher. We didn't come in here for a chiropractor adjustment hey. that's going to get back out of place because right. God said when I do the new thing, uh -huh. now, now it is forever. It's forever. I said it's forever. You ain't losing your shout. No, sir. You ain't losing your joy. No, sir. That affliction shall not arise a second time. No, sir. That giant will never get up again. No, sir. Somebody shout.
problems? Aren't you glad that he's bigger than all your fears? Aren't you glad that he's bigger than in a mountain that you can and cannot see? He's bigger than your past. He's greater than your present. He's magnified in your future. Somebody bless his name. Bless his name. Head on back to your seat rejoicing. as our God. I want to thank the over 1,000 intercessors. Over 1,000 intercessors who prayed for me not only Wednesday night, but Thursday night in Richmond, Virginia, and, and Friday night in Chicago. Uh, I don't know. I've ever seen anything like it. Uh, churches, uh, very large churches, where people are showing up at one o'clock in the afternoon to get in the building and screaming mad when I quit preaching at 1130 and nobody leaves. And the healing, delivering, mighty power of God. Stronger at the end than the beginning. That comes only one way. That comes through prayer. I thank God for bringing me back from the dead. Yeah. And I didn't come back to play. I didn't come back to fit in your little boys club. I didn't come back to build my name. God has a problem with those that have a name. Read the book of Revelation. He has a problem when you're rich and you say you're poor. I don't need that, but it's okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. You appreciate Elder Gamay. <laughs> he traveled with me this, uh, this past week. It was a great help to me. But I want to thank those of you who pray. 
Yours is the greatest ministry above all others. And I want to thank God for you. Second Corinthians 9.10. Quickly, Second Corinthians 9.10. Now, <laughs> Proverbs says, send now prosperity. You see, and if you're stuck, if you're stuck in the English interpretation of the word now, you just, you just stuck. You have to keep having more nows. Mm -hmm. See, that keeps preachers in business. Some preachers, the world's coming apart at the beginning of every sermon and put back together at the end of the, at the, end of the thing, and then it falls apart next Sunday. Start the whole thing all over again. God wants to do some permanent works. Uh, he starts by getting you born again instead of making a decision reason so many people struggle is they make decisions but they've never been converted uh, one of my great spiritual fathers the late Leonard Ravenhill said I am very very convinced that only five percent of the people attending evangelical churches are even saved five percent because there's no life change I mean, the book still says, you become a new creature. If you're still dealing with what you dealt with before he saved you, then you need another dip. If you still have a passion for that world out there, you need a dip. I don't have time. Second Corinthians 9, 10. Now, Proverbs says, send now prosperity. Now is not when. Now is not when. Now is a noun. Now is a thing. It is a type. It is a kind. Do you understand the difference? Send now prosperity. What kind of prosperity is that? It's prosperity that's always there now. It doesn't mean send it now and then it's extinguished, then it's over, then it's used up, then you need another now. When he puts now prosperity in you, according to the book of Ezekiel, it'll never leave you. Okay. Okay. So now may he that supplies seed, the sower, bread, the eater for food supply and multiply your seed, the seed you have sown. So the only way to a perpetual harvest is a perpetual seed. You know that God's intention is a perpetual harvest because you have right now in your hand a seed. If God intended your harvest to stop, your seed would stop. So the fact that you have seed means there's coming a harvest. No, you didn't understand me. Perpetual provision. What God led us into, this garden, oh, I can't get there. I can't go into time. This, how many of you believe you're going to be healed in heaven? Raise your hand. It's not a sin. Do you believe that you're going to have cancer in heaven? Then why should you have it now? No, see, you don't get it. You don't understand. Decay, death, disease, that's all a part of time. Time. But God breathes the ethereal ether of heaven. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he redeemed you, but you think you're still bound by time. But you are not bound by time. Get the sermon. But what is said to us is that number eight, give it to me again, quickly, on its side. Okay, leave it there, that's fine. Everybody shout that word. If you were here Wednesday night, you know it. Shimon. A season of super abundant fertility. That's what we stepped into. The optimum, the optimum opportunity for sowing seed is now. Not like now and not next Sunday. Not like on 818, but not now. Because God is not bound by time, he is neither bound by space. Meaning, if he's not bound by time, he always exists in the eternal present tense. That's the only way he doesn't get old. You get old because you live in your past and worry about your future. You don't live in the now. If you lived in the now, you wouldn't be tired right now. You wouldn't be thinking about, well, we got, we've been here a while. Hallelujah. Why do you get tired? Because you live in your past and worry about your future. If you lived in the now, you wouldn't be tired. You wouldn't be weary. You wouldn't grow weary. You just have your strength renewed like an eagle. That's an old covenant promise. Amen. So you have a seed, which means you have a perpetual harvest. And this is the season went now. Now. Right now. God's not, God's not counting up what you've already sown. <laughs> That's you that does that. God's not thinking about, well, what are you going to do about your vacay? God's not, God doesn't think like that. He supplied now, and you have it now. And if you sow it now, you'll have it to sow again. That's why he said on the first day of the week, bring the tithe, amen? Isn't that exciting? So you've got something, amen. Take 10% of it and sow it. And he'll return a hundredfold. And then you can sow again. Amen. There's a way you can do it. Look at that. Aren't they smart? They are really smart. You can make checks payable to Rod Park. No, payable to <laughs> W. Isn't it amazing? how God has blessed me through the years. Do you know that more years than not, I've given this church more than they paid me? This year after year after, you say that's impossible. Well, no, it's not impossible. This church not my source. You say, oh, well, you go out on the road. No, I give all that to the church too. Well, yeah, but you sell all those New York Times bestseller books. No, every penny of that goes here too. I don't take any of it. Isn't that glorious? Do I look like I'm hurting? I'm not hurting. God has supplied my needs from the time I'm eight years old and began to be a tither. Hallelujah. I didn't ask my wife if we could drive her car when we got married. I didn't move into her house. Yeah, I didn't do that. I bought her a new car and a new paid for house. 
and a new paid for car. And I was 29. Hallelujah. 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 But then I give away cars all the time. Huh? Well, why doesn't God give me a car? Well, how many you give away? <laughs> Brother Copeland was Brother Copeland was flying around he and Gloria and he looked over at Gloria at 41,000 feet and he said God spoke to me. She said, "Well, that's not unusual." He said, yeah, but I'm not really liking what he said. She said, what did he say? He said, God just told, asked me a question. He said, what are you doing driving, flying around in Rod Parsley's airplane? He told me that. I said, yeah, that's the same thing I wondered. You driving around, flying around my airplane. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Look at you with a pillow. You got a pillow. Shout, I got it. If you have a pillow at home, shout, I've got it. If you've got more than one pair of shoes, shout, I've got two. If you've got a refrigerator somewhere with some food in it, shout, I'm ready to eat. All right. That means you're in the top 20% of the wealthiest people on earth. So stop saying you're poor when you're rich. Yeah, you're looking at me funny. All right. You want me to get off this? Father, bless this offering. Bless every single person that sows. Thank you for supplying bread for the eating, seed again for the sowing. There doesn't seem to be one person in here today that is lacking any good thing. You have provided for us, and so joyfully and cheerfully, we bring the tenth part, our tithe and offering, to worship you with it and to sow a seed that releases a perpetual harvest. We bless you for it. Thank you for putting it in our hand to begin with and giving us the faith to sow it for your glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What are you going to do? Mountains are still being moved. Come on. And strongholds are still being loosed. Sing, son. I will believe it. Now I can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Any witnesses in the room? And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. <laughs> Witnesses that wonder are still what you do. You got to wonder right on your row. Wonder, still what you do. Come on, tell them, say, We are here for come and do. Come and do. Uh -huh. what do. Yeah, we are here. We are
Amen. Join hands with your neighbor and be standing. If you're comfortable joining hands with them. Make sure you got some hand sanitizer or good anointing, one of the two. I'm so happy. I've been, I, I, we got in at four o'clock from Chicago. And uh, uh, I just, at that point, got so excited about being here with my wonderful, wonderful friend who I, I love so much. I'm so thankful for the way God is using him. His church has exploded in 25 different ways. They got about 14 services on Sunday and every one of them full of the Holy Ghost. And that's why I love him. He's used all over the world. His family has come in and come of age and strengthening that great work in Kentucky so that he can be used even greater around the world. And uh, I have joy of folks asking me, do you know Tommy Bates? I said, I knew Tommy Bates before Tommy Bates was cool. <laughs> I love him. Without a moment's hesitation, when I was down for a year and a half and couldn't speak, I don't mean couldn't preach, couldn't preach for nearly three years, but for a year and a half, he was one of the very, very first ones that said, I'll come anytime you need me, anytime you want. You don't owe me a thing, wouldn't take a dime, and came and filled this great pulpit. That's a friend. And I love him, and I love his family. He loved my family, loved my mama, my dad. Now Joni and Ashton and Austin. He's just family. So Father, we bless your servant. We bless him with every strength and every gift and every blessing that you placed in our lives and in this place. Multiply him by it. Give him to drink of fresh water and fill him seven times over what he ever dreamed you could do. He loves you. We love him. So bless him now, we pray, pray while he's here with us. And then send him on his way, energized and strengthened and needs supplied feeling joy and blessing and victory in his heart. In Jesus' name, we receive him gladly as your prophet. Amen. Amen. Welcome our good, good friend, Pastor Tommy Bates. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Yeah. I've had many tears and sorrows. Oh, had questions about tomorrow. There were times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that these trials only come to make me strong. You see, I've been a lot of places and I've seen a lot of faces, but there were times I felt so all alone. Oh, but in my lonely hour, yes, my precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know that I was his own. That's the reason through it all, through it all, I've learned to try. 
trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Oh, I want to thank you for the mountains. And if I never had a problem, I'd never know my God could solve them. Never know what faith in His Word could do. Oh, that's the reason I say. Trust in Jesus, oh. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon the Some through the water. night season and all the day long let's give him praise you can be seated in the presence of the Lord I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ give honor to your pastor I'm so thankful that he has walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I'm thankful that he fought cancer and won. And I praise God for that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, when you come into these moments like this, especially with what's happened here in the supernatural, I am no stranger to the moving of the Spirit. I don't come, I wait for the wind to blow and put up the sail and go with it. I haven't come with a something in the package. I do have a message. But now I have to step into what God wants. I, 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 can't, I can't do what's on the agenda. Because when God begins to move like this, and especially Friday night at 3.15 in the morning, when I woke up out of a dead sleep, I was tired. I'd been working out in the chicken house and in the barn and out around the pond. And I put in a, and a doing a lot of other things. But at 3.15 in the morning when the Spirit of God woke me up out of a dead sleep and said, Forget ye the former things. He didn't just say, forget ye the former things. He said, this is what's going to happen at World Harvest. I said, well, is that what I'm going to preach on? And I never received anything else other than, forget ye the former things, for will I not do a new thing? I'm going to make rivers in the desert. <laughs> I'm going to make a way where there seemeth none. So if I don't do anything but be the out of the mouth of two or three witnesses this morning, I'm here to come in agreement. I've been here coming over here for over 20 years, and I've never heard Joni say any more than just a few, hello, how are you, and all that. I couldn't believe it when she opened up the Bible and actually started speaking. And not just once, but twice. Not twice, but three times. I started shivering all over. I said, Lord, if you're not talking today, I don't know who's talking. There's something happening in this house. I 
I've seen it happen before and I wouldn't be shocked if it don't happen again because out of this pulpit the nations of the world shall hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah so God if you'll just help me just follow and, and speak to me Lord you see Moses was up on top of the mountain at Rephidim and the battle was hot there was a young generation fighting the battle down in the valley and there was an elderly man up on the mountain he had to sit on the rock because he was so weary and tired and he had to have Aaron under one hand and her under another hand and as they held up his arms the battle was won the young man had enough sense to know if it wasn't for the elderly man up on the mountain I could never win the victory and the elderly man knew if I don't have that young man fighting the battle I'm not going to get the crown of my enemy this is not an old thing this is not a young thing but this is a new thing that God's doing right now there's a coming together of the old and the young all the miracles of the past everything that's happened in previous years there's a coming together in the name of Jesus and when the battle was fought it was Amalek it was Amalek Amalek is a vicious enemy you know who he preys on he preys on the weak he preys on those that are elderly he preys on those that are disabled and God said I want to destroy Amalek completely I want him totally wiped out but when the battle was over it was there when Moses erected an altar and he said God I'm going to call you by a name. Your name is Jehovah Nisi. You fight my battles and you cause me to win. I want you to know riding on a white horse this morning all around this sanctuary, Jehovah Nisi has a banner that is flying. He is declaring unto you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every seed that you've sown in the past, there is going to be a reaping of everything that's happened in this house it's not over behold I will do a new thing it's not an old thing it's not a young thing it's a new thing that God's gonna do and he's gonna show himself mighty 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 for the Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty hallelujah give him a clap and a shout of praise Now we find a young man, a young generation that's been anointed and appointed by God. He's been anointed in the midst of his brethren. He's had nine quarts of oil come over his head. He's the son of a slave woman. He's been pushed back in the corner. When Samuel came to anoint a king in his father's house, his father put him back there in a field to hide him because he's a son of a slave woman he don't get to sit in the house with everybody else but God knew where he was <laughs> and God called him out and God said I got something for you now this young man that's anointed and appointed of God he's got a calling on him he's got zeal he don't understand what all's happened in his life and now, just days before a promotion, just a few moments before that he's going to ascend to God's will, God's provident hand, he comes to a place. Amalek shows up again. Amalek, the same wicked, evil enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. The one that robs and takes away. That same evil, demonic power rises up again. And when Amalek came, he went to Ziglag, burn it with fire, stole the wives, the children, the sons, and the daughters. Now this young anointed appointed generation, what's up? What's going? I thought I had the power of God. I thought I was, what's going on? Now there's such distress. As his wife is gone, children gone, everybody's wife gone, the family's in a mess. David weeps and the men weep until there's no more power to weep. They're weeping with such intensity. 
Then the men rise up. What's the use? Well, all this anointing, what's the use? We're done. It's over with. And the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. When your, when your today is a disaster and your tomorrow, you can't even see a future for your life. There's only one place to go and that's looking back at you and look and see what the Lord has done. Oh yeah. Let me see what happened. I was out in the middle of that sheepfold. All the party was going on in my father's house. It was a great event, but I wasn't invited. Ah, but the next thing I heard my name. I had sheep residue all over me. I smelled. I didn't have time to get dressed up. But I come running out of the sheepfold. And the hand of God moved on me in the midst of my brethren. I was anointed from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I got a song that I didn't used to have. I was able to play music and I couldn't play music before. All at once this same power came upon me and I slew a lion and I slew a bear and the same power came on me and I killed a giant and how do you, oh glory to God, goodness and mercy begin to follow me all the days of my life when the enemy would come against me I had goodness on one side I had mercy on the other side let's give God a shout of praise for that is my goodness and mercy here hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah come on up here goodness and mercy help me out and I hope you got some muscles because the goodness and mercy that's been following me I said following me all the days of my life not when I was sitting in a church pew not when I was just worshiping God but goodness and mercy followed me when I was in a hell hole when I was in a crack house when I was in a jail cell when I should have had a wreck and been killed goodness and mercy me when I should have been murdered goodness and mercy caught me when my life was about to terminate and everything was going down goodness and mercy caught me and I'm here today because I've not had to walk alone because goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life and that's enough to turn your feet loose and shout about Thank you, goodness and mercy. But here's the message. I can't just stop with being encouraged. I can't just stop with dancing. I can't just stop with the hallelujah praise in this service. You hear me? You're getting built up spiritually. You're getting encouraged like you've never been encouraged before. But after, even though he was encouraged, he still didn't have anything. Even though he was still praising, he didn't have anything. Even though that he pr praised God for goodness and mercy following him. And I imagine he had a shout and spell and remembered the nine quarts of oil. And I could preach this for about an hour and a half, but you're going to have to preach it yourself and understand what God's done in your life. Uh, but never let it stop uh, with just an emotional experience uh, of what happened. Uh, David went to Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech. Ahimelech was murdered. I said he was murdered. His son was Abiathar. And he looked at him. And he said, Abiathar, I know that I'm not a Levite. I know I'm not supposed to act like a priest. I know that you're supposed to talk to God for me. I know that you're supposed to be the one that's going to bring me out. But Abiathar, this is so powerful and this is such a tragic event that I've got to talk to God for myself. If he slays me, let him slay me. You bring me that ephod. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to talk to God and I'm going to ask God, God, what are you going to do now? You see, when your encouragement is over and your dance is over and your 
shout is finished, you better find yourself a place where you and God have a little talk with Jesus, where you come into his presence. We can lay hands on you until you fall in the floor, till the back of your head's flat as a two by four. You can shout till you sweat. You can carry on. But God is calling his people. There's more to it than a shout and a dance. And I love every bit of it. And if I were 10 years younger, I'd already shout all over this house. But I will tell you this today. He said, don't stop with your encouragement. Don't stop with your shout. Don't stop with your dance. You put your ephod on and you say, I don't need the 800 number. I don't need this one over here. I don't need somebody to touch me. I don't need somebody to pray for me. I don't have to have this. I'm going into the presence of God for myself. I'm going to go to the presence of God for myself. He's my God. He's my King. Oh, let's give him praise. Woo! Mm. I said yes. This was before the cross. This was before Calvary. This was before the Redeemer shed his blood. But at three o'clock in the afternoon, on top of Golgotha's hill, in a place called Calvary, Jesus took every handwriting of ordinance, every accusation of Satan against the human race. He ripped it out of their hands because for 4,000 years, from Adam until Jesus Christ, Satan had kept records of every fault, every failure, every disqualification that existed. But Jesus said, Satan, you enemy, you defiant evil wicked one give me that handwriting I'm going to nail it to my cross that whosoever will I don't care if it's a mountain mama that doesn't have a tooth in her head I don't care if they live in a village under a hut I don't care what nation I don't care what ethnic group I'm going to nail every accusation that anybody anytime anywhere can come into the presence of God so there's no excuse. High five about five people and say you've got your encouragement today. You've got your word, but don't let it stop. You've got to put on that ephod. You've got to develop a prayer life. You've got to come in through the blood. You've got to live through the blood. You've got to put your family under the blood. You've got to put your home under the blood. You had to put your city under the blood. You had to put your nation under the blood. You had to put your children under the blood. I got something better than an ephod. I'm covered with the blood from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Let's give him praise. Woo! I'm covered with the blood. Say it, I'm covered with the blood. I'm covered with the blood. So supernaturally, put all these words together. I had a word, but no message. And then I had a message with no word. But God brought the word and tied the message. It's happening. But every single person in this house, every single person, you cannot put this kind of pressure. Some of you, Elijah that's with me, I married his parents. And I dedicated him as a baby. And I said, Elijah, when that incredible, awesome glory fell. It's always here. But there's certain seasons. There's certain seasons. And that season's in the house. Behold! 
forget ye the former things will I not do a new thing you hear me Amalek you hear me you defeated enemy you hear me right now you came after Moses and God rebuked you and now you've come after the anointed generation but I said the Lord rebuke you you have come oh he's tried to burn everything from the past you heard the message all day long he wants your family he don't want you he he wants your seed. He wants your seed. He's not concerned about me. He's con I'm an old man. What's he care about me? He's concerned about my seed. He's concerned about the next generation. He's concerned about those that have been anointed in the Father's house. And he wants to stop them. But the same anointing that came on Joshua and came on Moses, Jehovah Nisi, is in the house. All I got to do is talk to him. All I got to do is come into his presence. This is prophetic. 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 I won't rehearse the whole deal, but 2005, when I was just praying in a New Year's Eve service and had a I was feeling sorry for myself. You do that sometimes. Why, Lord? What have I done wrong? A am I being punished? Am I being corrected? At least tell me what I'm being corrected for. Why? When I walked five steps forward, I got knocked four steps backwards. I've done everything I know to do. And I got caught up. After, you know, you can, only, you can only cry around so long. At least that's for me. I don't even like to hear myself whine like that after a while. And after about 15 minutes, I got in the I got in the spirit and saw a vision of America, not to go into that vision. As I've told people many times, I'm not Perry Stone, and I don't know the feathers on the eagle. The claws on the eagle, nor the feathers on the dove. But as sure as I'm standing here, I saw that beast in Revelation. I saw the paws like a bear, body like a leopard, face like a lion. That was foreign to me. I saw a woman on top of that beast. And the woman was drinking. She's the woman of the false prophet. She was drinking of the blood of the prophets and the saints. I saw it. The blood was running down her face and the most hideous laughter you ever heard. I fell in travail. And for two and a half hours, I scrawled and screamed and cried as if someone had died. I didn't know who to tell. Went to my office, put cold washcloths on my face. I didn't tell a soul. Got up that Sunday morning, preached. Four days later, your pastor, the head of this house, the visionary, the apostle, he calls me and he says, God spoke to me and said, you are to come to World Harvest. That you have a word. And he said, I think he said I had, I had, uh, Benny Hinn two years ago and I had T.D. Jakes last year and, and uh, he said I'm not after an, a, a, anybody with a name he said but God spoke and said you I was so afraid and intimidated I said I'm going to have to look at my schedule and see if I can make it I never had, I never had one thing scheduled in the month of January. Who go, who wants you to preach in January anyway? God spoke and he said, shut this whining up. I don't want you to go preach. I want you to write this vision you saw down in your church. I want you to read it. Don't veer to the right or to the left. I came up here. I read it off of a piece of paper. The same travail. Travail, you hear me. Not one person went into the presence of God. Not two persons went into the presence of God. This house was nearly full. Everyone decided to put the ephod on. Everyone decided. I'm going into the 
presence of God because I saw your pastor coming out of a ring of fire and when he came out of the ring of fire a voice spoke and said in the election of 2004 I used Rod Parsley to push back the demonic powers of hell off of this nation he said go to the rescue of Rod Parsley support him because I used him to protect your nation that's what he spoke and when I I just I couldn't even understand what it was and then when he called me I said I will come that travail fell upon this house and I want to just sum it up like this a, a, a supernatural and that's what's in the house right now it's always been here but there's sometimes that there's apples on the tree there's sometimes that there's beans in the field there are times of the supernatural awakening and hell hates it and Amalek says I'm coming back again but I'm here to declare today in Jesus name put on your ephod get into the presence of God bottom line is this all nine gifts of the Spirit. 1,500 young people baptized in the Holy Ghost in one night. I can't even tell you. Books couldn't contain it. Spread to the school, spread everywhere. And so the word this morning, the word. He's doing a new thing. He's making a way in the desert. The word is, you've been encouraged in the Lord Wednesday night, today. But if you walk away encouraged and never get it back, you've just had a good feel good time. But I don't have to borrow someone else's ephod. I come covered with the blood. I have immediate access. He is here, moving in this place. Let's stand. I worship Him. I worship Him. He is here to break every chain. All in Jesus' name. I love you, I love you, I love you. You're here this morning. You haven't left yet. That's a miracle. Because some of you, your lives are messed up. You're sitting in a pile of ashes. You've been in the most encouraging service. Tell me where else in the world will you see such dancing going on on a Sunday morning? You'll be lucky to get that in a camp meeting much less on a Sunday morning. The enemy has been subdued. And this morning, there's some of you on the sidelines. You're not where you need to be with God. You're not ready to meet Christ. I want you, please. Some people's been here for a long time. You may have got here late. I want you to get out of your seat and say, today's the day. I'm, I'm, I'm going further than just encouragement. I'm going to come through the blood. And I'm talking to God myself. Come on. Miracle worker. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Now, I, I've been known to climb all over seats and go all the way to the back. Don't make me do that. I'm 62, but I get around very well. And I have no problem climbing over a chair. But there's some of you in the back of this camera. Don't let this service pass you by. There's some of you in the corners of this building. 
You've lived off of encouragement. You've lived off of the good time. But it's your time to get covered by the blood and to talk to God for yourself. I want you to come quickly. Those of you that need a spiritual transformation, you need a spiritual transformation. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, my God. that is who you are. Oh, He is here to break every chain, hey. to set the captive free, Hallelujah. to put your home back together. give you a powerful shout this morning. Oh, come on, come on. There's still, still 24 of you need to be there. Miracle worker, promise keeper. I want to go, I want to go another step. There's I'm a, I'm a, I know there's young women called in the ministry too, but particularly there's young men in this house that's called into the ministry and you're not sure where to put your foot down next. I want you to come and stand right here. Young men called into the ministry. What I mean not sure where to put your, you don't know how to go about what's going on in your life. Come on, come quickly. Stand right here. I'm gonna tell you something. There's a generation up on the mountain. We got snow on the mountain. I've been in the ministry for 46 years. You have to fight in the valley. You've got to fight. I know it's not, it's not popular in today's worship to sing anything about fighting, but the truth of the matter is you'll never win unless you fight. And I'm going to pray today that something gets a hold of you that you will say, I'm going to take that ephod and I'm going in the presence of God to Mahasha for myself. I'm not going to be anybody else. I'm going to be me. Because if this Bible college, which God has ordained, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Get yourself ready, Sister Ashton. This is going to be a year, hallelujah. It's going to start off with the blood and the demonic powers. This is gonna be a year of breakthrough. Everything you've confessed for 2018, it's not over yet. And God is gonna send an abundance. Now all of you that are giving your hearts to the Lord, come on, lift your hands, begin to pray, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let yourself know you're not just a body. You're not just a mind. You're alive in the Spirit of God moving in you now. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa's going to sing one more, one more chorus. If you're in this altar, lift your hands. And say this. I believe. I receive. When I pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me, wash me in your blood, give me eternal life. Holy Spirit, fill me with power to live for Jesus. Amen. Now turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to heaven. Everybody, everybody. May be seated. It was not my intention, but nothing this morning has been anyone's intention but God's. Aren't you glad you go to a church where you don't know what's going to happen? Don't you love Pastor Tommy Bates? He left. He left about 20 services to be here with us today. I want you to tell him and his great church how much you appreciate it. Yeah. Now be seated. I want you to reach in front of you and get an envelope. I want everybody to get an envelope. We, we had, Pastor Bates didn't ask for anything. He, 
He already came and preached once for absolutely nothing, left his church, lost money, didn't get a penny for being here. And I don't think that's right. Uh, he didn't ask anything in the coming today. And that's why he should get double honor. He didn't tell me, well, you know, I can come on Sunday morning if. As you could tell, he had a word in his heart. So let's just receive an offering today. And I don't care. I don't care if we just give it to him and his wonderful family. I'm sure they don't pay him anything near what he's worth. And we could just bless him or he can put it in his ministry, do anything he wants with it. But let's bless him today. I didn't say tip him. I said, let's bless him. If you're making out a check right now for less than you're going to spend on lunch for you and your family, then you need to pray again. This is God's servant. This is God's servant with God's word in his mouth. And he came because the Holy Spirit sent him on an assignment, which is not finished. So we want to bless him and we want him to drive back to Kentucky just rejoicing all the way. Rejoicing. Rejoicing all the way. Amen. We want to bless him. Bless him. We want him to go, whoa. Amen. I, I know what it's like to open that envelope and go, go. Oh. I know what that's like, and I don't want that here, not ever, not ever. These men and women that stood with this great church, first of all, what kind of church survives when the pastor is down for nearly three years? How, how do you survive that? How do you survive that? And yet, uh, God, sustained us through that whole thing because he's a great, great God. And we should bless those that stood in my stead so faithfully, so lovingly, giving so much of themselves during that time. And now he's back with us today. And what a blessing. So go ahead. I'm just giving you time to make a lot of zeros on whatever you're doing. You can still do it by text if you want to, or the envelope, or by check, however you choose to do that. Today we will distribute over 1,000 backpacks of blessing. Uh, they're about $25 each, so $25,000 or more from this great church going to children that need it the most, beginning with children in this church. Amen. We don't, we don't go out there and people in here have needs. Take care of these needs first, and then we go out there. And we're so glad. Are you wanting to tell me something? I'm just here to support What else am I supposed to tell them? Um, first of all, can we thank God again for our pastor and Pastor Tommy Bates? Thank you. And we want to thank our online family in Elkhart. We love you, and we'll see you right back here. Love you, night. Elkhart! Amen. So, Pastor, we want to just give some instruction. is about to do a new thing and if he is he's not just about ready to use the old you I'm talking to you about getting somewhere tonight from which you can never get back raise the standard has impacted generations for decades and this october it's back to infuse a seven times greater anointing into your ministry and impact your everyday life compel men and women to come in, lay hands on the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and build God's kingdom. Elevate your ministry with purpose and anointing. 
Raise the Standard 2018 includes unique workshops led by pioneers of ministry leadership, creativity, and technology, giving you unique tools to reach your world. Make your plans to experience RTS 18 October 10th and 11th, 2018. Early registration is open now for only $59. Call now or go to rodparsley.com and register today. 1-800-227-5278. 